we have learned how we can find an explicit solution of x prime equals a times x. While that is for the case where a is diagonalizable. We will do the other cases later. However, such an explicit formula does not really provide too much information how the solution looks. Some kind of graph would be really nice. But how are we going to do this? We have factors as a function of time. The answer? We can use the so-called phase space. In this video, we will see what this phase space is and how to draw it. Furthermore, we will look at equilibrium points, because these are an essential ingredient of our phase space. So let us look at the equilibrium points first. So we have x prime equals some function of x1 and x2, and x2 equals some prime equals some function of x1 and x2 as well. So we are in an equilibrium point if we stay there forever. So what's the idea? We have an equilibrium point with x1 and x2 coordinates if its derivatives are zero, so if f1 and f2 are zero. Because if that is the case, if f1 and f2 are both zero, then x1 equilibrium prime equals zero, x2 prime is zero, so the rate of change is zero and you stay there. So if you are in an equilibrium point, you stay there. That's why they are called equilibrium points. So that's the idea. How are we going to find them? We are going to look in the case where we have constant coefficients first. So x prime equals matrix A times x. Now, if you have an equilibrium point, this means that this right hand side has to be zero. So A times the equilibrium point equals zero vector. Now, if A is inversible, we can bring it to the other side. We have A inverse times A times x equilibrium equals A inverse times zero, zero. So if A is invertible, this means that the x equilibrium is zero. So when is A uh, invertible? Well, as part of our procedure, we are always computing those eigenvalues. If you have no zero eigenvalues, then A is invertible. So this will be for most of the cases we are studying. So most of the cases our A is invertible, we can invert, and our only equilibrium point will be the origin. So that's about the equilibrium points for now. How are we going to draw the phase space? What is the idea? Well, we make the x1, x2 plane. So we put x1 on the x-axis and x2 on the y-axis. And we take an easy example here where our a is just minus 1, 0, 0, 3. So how are we going to draw the phase space? For example, we suppose we are in the point 1, 1. So we are over here. What's going to happen with our x1 and x2 if we are at a certain po time at the point 1, 1? Well, in that case, we have x1 prime equals minus 1 times 1 uh, plus 0 times 1, so equals minus 1, and x2 prime equals 3. So x1 prime equals minus 1, x2 prime equals 3, which, mean that's, which means that x1 is decreasing and x2 is increasing. So we're basically going into this direction. Like that. Minus 1, 3. So if you are at 1, 1, we know in which direction our solution is going. We can do the same trick for if we are in the point minus 1, 1. So if we are in the point minus 1, 1, then we get uh, x1 prime equals 1 and x2 prime equals 3. So 1, 3. So if we are in the point uh, minus 1, 1, we are going into the direction 1, 3. So we're going into this direction, like that. Now, we can do uh, the same for many more points, so let's do it for uh, 1 minus 1. Uh, in that case, we would have minus 1 minus 3, so we're going down and to the left. And in the point minus 1 minus 1, we are going to the direction 1 minus 3, so that is this direction. So, we can make many, many errors, and in this case, this co combination of all points with arrows indicating in which direction we are going, that is called the phase space. And if you have enough arrows, of course, you can visualize in which the uh, solution is going. So let's continue a bit to complete it, because this would, of course, take a lot of time, because now we did only four points. But if you want to draw the full phase space, maybe you want 100 points, which will be quite a lot of work. Computer can do it for you, of course. but by hand, we can also uh, 
uh, get some results. So we had those errors over here. Let's copy them. Now, if we are on the x-axis, so if we are at some time at the point x1, 0, in that case, we would have x1 prime equals minus x1 and x2 prime equals 0. So in that case, we stay on the x-axis because x2 prime is 0. It is 0. x2 prime is 0, so it stays 0. And x1 prime equals minus x1, so x1 becomes smaller if x1 is positive, so going in that direction, or bigger if x1 is negative, so going into that direction. So that's what happens if you are on the x1 axis, you're basically going in towards the equilibrium point in the origin. We can do the same game if you are on the x2 axis. So what happens that then? So uh, we are at the point 0 x2, where x2 is like positive or negative, can be anything. What happens then? In that case, again with the same a over here, x1 prime equals 0 and x2 prime equals 3 times x2. So if x1 is 0, x1 prime is 0 and stays 0, so we stay on the x2 axis. x2 prime equals 3 times x2, so if x2 is positive, we are going to grow. If x2 is negative, we are going down. So we are go basically going in that direction. So this information about the axis uh, already tells us how we are going. And now we can say complete the full picture, the full face space, just sketch it by, say, follow the errors. Arrow. So if it would be somewhere like here, we would go like this. If you would start somewhere here, we would travel like that. If we travel somewhere here, follow the arrows again, we travel something like this. And if we are here, we travel like that. So by having this information, in this case, on the axis, we can draw the full phase space. In this case, with this relatively easy A. So how do we do this if A is slightly more complicated? So an example we did previously was with this A over here, 1141. And in the previous example, we computed the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. And we got a full solution. Now, how do you draw the phase space in this case? Now, that works as follows. First of all, you draw the eigenvectors in the x1, x2 plane. That's what we have already done here. Now, notice that if uh, you are at a certain point, at a point where c2 equals 0, so you choose an initial condition where c2 equals 0, then your solution is of the form minus 1, 2 times e to the power minus t. So you are on minus 1, 2 times e to the power minus t, and because c2 is 0, you stay on this. So if you are somewhere on an eigenvector, you stay on this eigenvector, and due to the power minus, due to the e to the power minus t, you're drawn in. Your uh, 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 the e to the power minus t becomes smaller. So the minus one two is in red. So we are drawn in. So we stay on the red line, and we are going in somewhere, somehow like that. We can play the same game if c1 is zero. You start at some point where c1 is zero. Then your solution is c2 times 1, 2 times e to the power of 3t. So then you are on 1, 2, the yellow line. You stay on 1, 2, and you become much bigger due to the power e to the power of 3t. So if t becomes bigger, you become very big. So you're going out. So if you have your eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you can draw the lines through the eigenvectors. You know what is going on on these lines, so you can make the arrows on the lines, like I just did. And then you can make the full face page, you can make a sketch of the full face page, a very good one would require, of course, a computer again, but you can get a sketch of the full face page by following the arrows. So suppose you start over here, well, we're going a bit like this and then like that. And if you follow, are here, follow the arrows again, we're going a bit like, towards the origin and then like that. And if you start over here, follow the arrows, going sort of like that. And if you start over here, following again the arrows from the red to the yellow, like that. And in this way, you can make a sketch of the phase space using the information coming from eigenvalues and eigenvectors.